Hi, everyone. I'm Deidre Behar. I'm a host and correspondent at Entertainment Tonight. And today I'm going to be your moderator for the ATX Virtual Festivals panel for Selena the Series. Now, of course, Selena the Series really spotlights and, and beautifully showcases the life and legacy of Tejano superstar Selena Quintanilla. She started out as a young girl living in Texas with big dreams, playing small gigs, and eventually achieved so much success that she actually became the most successful Latin female artist of all time. The series also explores Selena's family, the Quintanilla family life, and, and all the hardship and struggle and celebration that they got to experience along the way. So I'm really excited about today's panel. Please help me welcome some of the incredible people who brought Selena this series to life. First, I want us to say hello to executive producer, Jaime Davila. Hello. Hi. Let's say hello to executive producer and series creator, Moises Zamora. Hi, DJ. Hi. Let's say hello to the incredible woman who brought Selena Quintanilla's incredible spirit to life, Christian Serratos. <laughs> Hi. And we've got Ricardo Shavira, who of course played Selena's father, Abraham Quintanilla. How's everyone doing? Of course, we got to acknowledge we're all still at home. You guys look great virtually. How's everything going? So good. Yeah. Okay, I like I like seeing these big smiles. Uh, I, I want to get right into it. You know, I, I have to tell you, growing up as a huge Selena Quintanilla fan, the amount of excitement that I felt when I first read online that you were going to be doing this series, it, it completely overwhelmed me in the best way. So, um, Moises, let's go to you first. I mean, how do you feel knowing that you were able to have this moment to bring this series to life? I'm incredibly grateful and honored. Um, I think uh, having to work in this essentially iconic Mexican-American story and to put on the screen in a very humble way, uh, Selena's journey into stardom is just one of the once in a lifetime opportunities. And I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful for the cast. I'm very grateful for the Quintanilla family, for Campanari, for Netflix. It's just been um, such an incredible journey in the sense that, you know, right now we're, we just released season two and it's so emotional. And it's, I can't believe that she was such an incredible star that didn't get to really be to that place. But, you know, it's really affecting future generations. The nine-year-olds, the eight-year-olds, they are like already looking into Selena as a role model and to her life story. And I think that we've yet to see even the, the bigger impact of her star and in this series. So I'm just, I'm just over the moon. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's so amazing how Selena really transcends time, how she continues to make an impact on people's lives even today. Um, Jaime, I wanna ask you, what is it about Selena that you think endures her so dearly to fans? I would throw the question right back at you, DJ. What is it about Selena? Was, oh, I mean, I, how much <laughs> time do you have? I could go on all day. Exactly. That's um, my problem too. I mean, I think she was everything and anything. Um, and I think that was just so much fun about the opportunity of the series, right? Because I think, you know, one of the things that often happens when you have legends like Selena is that, you know, she becomes sort of bigger than a human being almost, right? She becomes an icon and she is. But I think one of the most oppor amazing opportunities of the series that I think, you know, Moises and the writers and uh, Christian and Ricardo, the actors just did so wonderfully was they gave this level of humanity to Selena and to the entire family. So you really can't forget that these were real people with real ambitions, with real dreams that had to actually make it happen. You know, they had to work hard, they had to get there. And I think what an amazing opportunity to, to, to remind people of this incredible Mexican-American story and American story, you know, of someone that um, transcended time and inspired generations to come. You know, I, we wouldn't have the music that we have today without Selena. We wouldn't have the fashion that we have today without Selena. And it's just an amazing opportunity uh, to be able to tell that story, but more than anything, to work with amazing cast and crew to actually get that done. Well, speaking of cast and crew, we're so lucky we've got Christian and we've got Ricardo here with us today. Christian, how do you feel about Selena? What is it about her that really excites you? 
I mean, it's, it's hard to describe because it's so, it's so much. It's, it's, it feels a bit all consuming. I grew up being such a fan of Selena and feeling so close to her, so close that she felt like a family member or sister or cousin. And so I always felt very protective over her and her legacy and her music and, you know, everything Selena. And so getting the opportunity to play her was overwhelming. It was excitement, but it was also like fear and responsibility. And um, I'm just pleased that I got to do it with with these guys. I mean, we got to film in Mexico, which, you know, brought me closer to my heritage. And I just feel, um, I feel really like satisfied with the entire experience. And Ricardo, how are you feeling about it? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about this experience um, and about Selena that, uh, that you were like, I really need to be a part of this project? I, I, I'm from South Texas. Mm. Uh, you know, I, this is the South Texas is home for me. And, uh, she and I are four months apart, uh, in, in terms of age or, or wow. would have been, uh, you know, uh, so when she, her success was happening, you know, during that time, it, that was when she was in high school, I was in high school. When I was in high school, going to classes, she was playing at Rosedale Park and at the Poteet Strawberry Festival. And, you know, I was hearing her music blaring from all the different trucks and cars on the south side and the west side of San Antonio. So, you know, it, it was a part of my, the backdrop of, and landscape of my young adulthood. So, I mean, to me, it means everything. So I have to ask, did your paths ever cross? No. No, our, our paths, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, no, we didn't. I mean, I, I, I knew about her and I knew many people that, that actually knew them, that played, that there were musicians in town that played with them. And as I started working on the project, I met so many more people that they're like, you know, that I met them or that I knew them. I was like, what? Um, but it was, it was interesting. The, the one run-in that I had, which it's kind of tragic in a way, uh, I was at school undergrad at Incarnate Word College. And the day that she died, I was um, walking to my bus stop. And to go to my bus stop, I had to cross in front of her uh, clothing store on Broadway. <laughs> and there were already people out there with flowers and votive candles. And the news cameras were out there filming. And people were out there crying. And as I was walking by, I was like, I think something happened. I should probably get home and watch the news. This was before cell phones and the internet and all that stuff. Um, and so when I got home, I, my dad, I opened the door. My dad was like, come sit down. Selena got shot. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I have to tell you, you guys are, are doing incredible work, um, really entertaining the fans, keeping her spirit and her legacy so bright and, and shining. Um, if, if we can, I kind of just want to go back to the beginning, um, Moises and Jaime, you know, this is a tall order, bringing a series like this to life, honoring a figure who is so cherished and so beloved. Can you guys kind of start me off at the beginning and, and how do you go about conceptualizing this and then bringing it to life? Moises, let's start with you. Well, I mean, as soon as I got a call that I was meeting Campanario and we were going to be discussing the Selena Quintanilla project, I was just freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I, mean, I try to be professional when I met them. I think I did an okay job, but, uh, you know, it was, it's, it's one of those things is like, okay, uh, what do I do? I got to give it a shot. I'm going to do all the research. This is really important. Um, and it's just, I just never thought that this was going to be possible. So, um, you know, the meeting went really well. We talked about a lot about what it really means. And I think one of the things that really stuck uh, for me during that initial meeting and talking about how we can, uh, you know, basically tell this iconic story is the tone. Um, you know, this is inspirational. This is like an, a dream, you know, come true for people like us. And we wanted to preserve that. And it was very exciting to, to meet, you know, Jaime and Rico in that meeting to that, that they're willing to put that kind of uh, story out there and not focus too much on the, 
or the negativity or the tragedy of it, you know? Um, and that to me really just, you know, meant the world because we get to see ourselves reflected in, in these hardworking individuals. And, and, you know, the Quintanilla family, when we flew to uh, Corpus Christi, also felt the same. And, and even though that was nerve wracking to do that, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, just really, really proud of that. And, and I'm so happy that, uh, you know, everyone got to see that kind of vision, you know, simultaneously. It's just bringing something incredible to the screen like that. Jaime, was it nerve wracking for you to meet the Quintanilla families and share this idea with them? No. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, the, uh, yeah. The, uh, the Quintanillas are Mexican American royalty, right? And, and rightfully so. I mean, I think, you know, it's, it was this amazing opportunity to meet your heroes. And I think when you, when you get to meet people who transform the world, it's always an immense honor. And then you get to meet them and you see, man, they're really funny, man, they're really humble. It's, it's so surreal in a way. And just to add to, you know, what Moises was saying, I think, you know, we were just so excited as a company in Campanario to be able to tell this Mexican American epic. And for us from the very beginning, it was like, wow, what an amazing opportunity to really, and this was Moises's original vision. When, you know, when he came into that meeting, he really um, knocked us out of the, knocked it out of the park because he sort of really understood the journey uh, from the very beginning of the, what the continuance had to go through and how hard it was. Um, and I think for us, knowing how difficult their journey was, it was something that we, we took this incredibly seriously and we worked incredibly hard, you know, and I think that was super fun for us to make sure that we did this right. And we got to hire amazing cast and crew. And I think that's something that we're just so, in the writer's room that we're just so proud of because, you know, this project was majority produced, uh, acted, directed, you know, 99% Latinx. Um, it's an incredible opportunity to be able to showcase our talent and our skill set, not just to our communities, right, in the United States and Mexico and Latin America, but to the entire world. Um, I, I still sort of pinch myself that everything that we all worked on so hard and put in so many hours on, you know, premieres day and date, the same time in my home as someone in Japan. Um, and, you know, you can just imagine young girls all over the world being inspired by the story of an outsider who worked hard and made it. And, you know, when you have that amazing opportunity, you work really hard and you make sure that you work with the, with the best. And luckily we were blessed with the best team in all of TV. And I think you can see it in the product. I think that's why the show is so, so amazing uh, because everyone who worked on it just worked so hard. And to have the support of the Quintanilla family, uh, what do you think it was about this series that made them so open to wanting to be a part of it and, and tell Selena's story? You know, I, I will never speak for the family, but I will say that I think what was a really cool opportunity was to really introduce a new generation to the story. You know, I think there's so many, I think, again, we all, we all think we know the story, but um, there actually hasn't been a, a full accounting of the story visually of, of AB's journey, of Suzette's journey, of Abraham and Marcela's journey. Um, and I think that was just an amazing opportunity for all of us uh, to really show and tell that story. So Christian, I wanna to go to you. I have to imagine that getting this opportunity to play Selena Quintanilla, someone who you've obviously admired for such a long time, I have to imagine that that was a real pinch me moment. So I would love if you could indulge us, tell us a little bit about the audition process and what was it like the day you got the call that you got the job? Um, I feel like when I tell this story, it's kind of like lackluster. Um, because by the time I got the official call that I was going to be going to Mexico and filming, I was so just consumed with all the work ahead of me that I think everyone else was trying to get me to celebrate. And I was trying to run off the phone because I needed to pack. I needed to get my daughter situated. I needed to figure out like all the logistics and I needed to just start the work. Um, so I, I've said this before, but I think the pinch me moment will happen probably in a few months, like once everything is done and completed um, and I'm not required to like discuss it anymore, I think I'll finally be able to be alone with myself and go, I can't believe I played somebody I, I've looked up to my entire life. Um, but the audition process was fun. It was of course um, difficult because you care so much and you want it to be right. And I'm really hard on myself. And so, 
I mean, how many times you guys make me send in tapes? A lot. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I was constantly telling myself, it's not good enough, do it again, do it again, do it again. Um, and I was filming Walking Dead at the same time, so it was a lot. But um, I think it was, it acted, the audition process acted as prep in some sort of way because I transitioned so quickly from The Walking Dead to Selena. I think I, I wrapped on Rosita and started filming, I think within like 10 days, maybe less. I think I'm being, uh, I think it's less. And um, Less, yeah. Yeah. And so um, it, the audition process, I kind of had to act as if I had the role um, before I knew that I did, because if I didn't, I knew I would already be behind. So I was just like, you have this job, start prep on it now. And I just utilize the audition process as prep. That manifestation is so real. I'm just, I'm just curious, was it you sitting in your room, listening to Selena on repeat? Were there hairbrush moments in the mirror? Was it studying um, uh, clips on YouTube and music videos? It was all of it. It was anything I could get my hands on, especially because, you know, there have been a lot of um, biopics about really amazing singers and they've all done so well and the performances have been amazing. So not only is, this, is there pressure on yourself to do a great job and pressure from the community because this woman is so beloved, but there's also a history of really great um, biopics about musicians. And so I just wanted so badly to do a great job. And, um, you know, every, everyone wanted to give 110% and that really bodes well for everyone else because when, when somebody else is, you know, on top of their game, it really, um, it implores other people to do the same. So yeah, I was just working with dialect coaches and singing coaches and anybody I could get my hands on out of my own pocket before I had the job because I was just so, I wanted to just play her. Um, I wanted to get close to her. And in, in some ways this was my like, thank you to her. Like I, 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 we all work six days a week, seven really. And um, you know, I didn't see my family. None of, you know, we're away from our families. It's very hard work. And I think it kind of is our homage, our thank you to her for everything she gave to us. Moises, I'm sure you saw a few women who were really talented and really wanted this job, but let's make Christian blush a little. What was it about Christian that you were like, she's a cut above the rest, she's our Selena? Uh, well, I mean, I first of all, I love her work in Rosita, so she can kill zombies, she can, she can kill it on the stage. <laughs> uh, and, um, and additionally, I, when, I met uh, Christian at a, at, a, at a lunch before all of this happened and we were just, you know, nothing related to Selena, but we were just sort of getting to know each other through a friend and, and I, she really has that generous spirit, you know, uh, that Selena had. It's like this, this quality that you don't rehearse and it's just part of the person that who, that, you know, of you, of your being. And, and we just needed that because like Selena was like all life you know, and everyone loved her. And she went through so much hardships and challenges and a male dominated world that we wanted that sunshine to come through. And then additionally, in the audition process, it's like, she gave us everything. She gave us like teenage Selena, she gave us like full grown Selena. Um, I mean, she was just so emotional in the way that she was channeling her that we're like, oh my God, it's like a no brainer. You know, this is her and you really do require uh, a level of professionalism and experience. And also she's being able to tap to all of that at once in such a period of time with very little, you know, preparation or at least anticipation, just like, okay, you need to do this now and you do this now. And, and the joy came through and I'm, I'm just so, you know, just in awe of her work. And so uh, I, I'm forever grateful thank her for, for everything that she did, as, as well as the rest of the cast. Ricardo was incredible, you know, and- uh, I'm kidding. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. She was her talking about me, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, right. We'll talk about that later, okay. Listen, I've got plenty of praise for Ricardo coming. Uh, <laughs> I, I will get into how amazing you were transforming into Abraham Quintanilla. But uh, Jaime, I have to go to you real quick. I saw you smiling and nodding as, as Moises was just sharing all the beautiful words about Christian's performance. Is there anything that you can add to that? I, I just want to echo what Moises said, which was, you know, I think from a very first, and I think you maybe filmed the, you know, this video in your trailer or something. I'm trying to remember the exact video, but there was basically a video where Christian 
acted like Selena and, and she smiled and I, you know, Rico and I and Moises and literally just everyone was like, that's, that's her. Like it's, and every step of the way, every single audition was just better than the last, better than the last. And I think that proved to us just the work ethic that Christian had, that she was going to put the time and effort to do this. And she, I mean, how difficult is it to leave your family, become an icon, work nonstop, um, and she did it, and she did it without complaint. She did it with such effortless um, grace. I mean, yeah, I think Christian is one of those people that you meet and you never forget. And, you know, Selena was inspiring, um, but hopefully, you know, as people learn the story of what Christian had to do to become Selena, hopefully people get inspired by that too. Oh, man, that was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> that felt very Selena, that response. <laughs> Christian, I know that you really entrenched yourself in the research process and you really studied this incredible woman through and through. What surprised you the most about Selena as you really dug into your research? Um, it wasn't something new. It was, it was realizing how long she knew exactly where she was supposed to be in life. Like, you know, you admire this singer because she's an incredible singer and she gives incredible performances. Like she's a beast on stage, she really transforms. But then you see that she's also doing fashion and she's um, trying to do different styles of music in different languages. And um, she really just um, had such dreams. And I thought that maybe that was an evolution that, you know, at some point in her career, she decided that she was gonna do more things. And it was really interesting to me um, to learn that she knew she wanted to do those things as a child and she wanted to do them all at the same time. And it's also something that I could really relate to because I also feel like I have so many ideas and I just wanna do them all at once. And, and, and from time to time, that can kind of paralyze you, but she was so, um, she just, she knew exactly how to get done what she wanted to get done. And I thought that was such like an admirable uh, quality. I love that. Well, I hope that you get to cross some of those things off the bucket list, much like Selena got to achieve many of her dreams. Uh, Ricardo, I want to go to you. Uh, I said it before and I'll say it again, you know, what a tremendous job you did really becoming Abraham Quintanilla. Um, I, I would love to know about your process and what it was like for you approaching this role where you're playing, you know, a man who, who the public is very familiar with. Um, well, first, I, I really didn't think that this was, I, 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 I didn't think that this audition should happen um, because I was, my reps had, called me and sent me the appointment. And I was like, who am I auditioning for in this? Like, I'm not understanding this. Um, I know I'm too old to play Chris, but I, they don't have me auditioning for Abraham. <laughs> and then I saw the appointment. And so I called my, I called my reps and I said, guys, I said, look, man, I said, do y'all know anything about the Hano music or Selena and her story? I said, no. I said, you're from North Carolina and you're from Boston. I said, you guys know nothing about this. I said, this is this is this is a waste of this is a waste of my time, and this is going to be a waste of the production's time. I said, so that I, I'm I'm going to pass. Wow. And then they called me back about 15 minutes later and said that uh, casting Carla who wanted to speak with me personally. And so I said, okay. And so she gets on the phone and she's like, uh, I gotta go. I think this is your part. And I said, okay, fine, but you have to explain to me why I don't understand why, you know? And so she proceeded to tell me that I'd be playing him over the course of, you know, from the time she was eight, nine years old until, until the tragedy of her death. So that's a span of 15, 16 years. And she sent me some photographic images of Abraham from that time to when she, when she uh, tragically passed away. And then it made more sense to me, you know? Um, and, uh, and so then I what I started doing was like, okay, let me let me look at the material. And I read the material and the material was very good. So um, we started the audition process. And then as I, as I was doing the audition process, I started doing some of my due diligence in terms of um, watching videos and trying to learn about Abraham's character uh, from, but things like, you know, from his cadence to uh, the gate of, of how he carried himself. Um, you know, those, the, the, the physicality, the physicality is something that, 
you know, especially when, if as an actor, if you don't feel that um, that maybe it's a good match for you, the best way to match yourself up with a character is to find physical specificities to to make yourself feel like you're living in their body, even if even if it may not be correct. It's something that physically def gives definition to what it is that you're trying to accomplish with character. Um, and so, um, so I started doing that. We, we did a, I think a Zoom. I think we did a Zoom, right, Jaime? You, me, and Enrico? And yeah. that went well. And then they asked me for another self-tape. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, come on, man. And, uh, but they, were, they, wanted me to, they wanted me to look like Abraham. They wanted me to try and make myself look like Abraham as much as possible. <sighs> so I was like, okay. So I went and I got, my son had a pair of cheap uh, $10 sunglasses that he got at a swamp meet or something. And I pulled them out of his drawer. And there was a picture that I had of Abraham that had a, um, where he was wearing a specific colored, like Yvetta or Tommy Bahama shirt. And I, I found one uh, at a thrift store. These, these guys don't know this story. Um, and, uh, and so I got that and, and I proceeded to put myself on tape once again at looking like Abraham as best as possible. And then I, uh, and then I got the part. Um, and, then, um, and then I really started to do my work from there. And that was, watching as much video as possible. I met with several people here in San Antonio that had worked with the Quintanillas and that had worked with Abraham. Uh, uh, Ruben Salazar, who does a lot of the Tahano music writing here in San Antonio for the Express News, as well as Ramon Hernandez, who's, who is, um, he's a, uh, a historian of all things Latino. And it was really cool because uh, Hiro, uh, Hiromi, uh, our director, she came out to San Antonio because I gave her a tour of San Antonio and Tejano, you know, Tex-Mex and all that. And we went to Ramon's house and we spent three hours with him just going through um, photos that probably nobody has ever seen because he was the, pho the photographer for Selena y Los Dinos for two to three years, uh, their personal photographer. So he toured with them, he did everything. So he had photos that like nobody's seen. Um, and that was, that was very important, you know, to see, um, to see those kind of behind the scenes, the life of Selena and her family. So it, it sounds like you really immersed yourself into the research process, much like Christian did. Um, I'm curious, as you were, you know, peeling back the layers and learning more and more about Abraham, what surprised or stunned you the most? What's, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think I was stunned by it, but I think it's something that's kind of left out a lot and that, it's that this, this person is, he's a father. Ultimately his job before anything and everything else is, a, is being a father to these children. And I think probably he was getting them or at least getting his son to um, you know, be interested in music because A, it was something he could teach him and B, it would probably keep him out of trouble. I mean, those are like very simple things that you're thinking of from a, from a parent perspective. Okay, but he was also instilling in his children a, a, a sense of self-pride and self-worth, okay, with, with the music. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, they started to have some success. And, uh, but ultimately, he was constantly a father first. And I think that gets lost a lot, you know, because uh, there are stories, I'm sure, you know, where, you know, we, I, I, I mean, I've heard stories, you know, and, there, and there's some reports where, you know, maybe he, it, wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the best of situations, but I kind of, I don't like that idea. I like the idea that, that you know, he had to present himself a certain way to the public. Um, you know, he had a public persona, but um, I think that he also probably had a very private persona when he was with his family. Well, and I think that that's something that this series does so beautifully is that, you know, I think even, and this is just as a viewer perspective, maybe even before you prioritize the music and the glitz and the iconic costumes and all that. It's really the story of a hardworking Mexican-American family. And Christian, you and Ricardo have so many touching scenes together, father-daughter scenes, manager-artist scenes, you know, really taking this, this dream and making it explode into an incredible reality um, for Selena. So I would love to know, Ricardo, what was it like working opposite Christian? And Christian, what was it like having Ricardo there playing your on-screen dad? Ricardo, go. What's it like working? Oh, with no, ladies first. <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> I love working with Ricardo. I think we had some of the like most fun 
it was it was always easy and you know he's a very prepared and very talented actor and he's got great ideas too so um I always looked forward to it because we always just got to like riff off each other. I always knew it was going to be a great scene and I always knew we were going to fuck around and joke around and have fun. <laughs> well, you do have some very intense scenes together. I am curious, Ricardo, do you remember any moments um, that were particularly funny or a, a great behind the scenes story that you can share while working opposite from Christian? Um, yeah, I, I do actually. I, I have a few. <laughs> yeah, I'll over this first. <laughs> um, but no, no, I, no, 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 I mean, no, we were always, we were always joking around and messing around, you know, and, and she, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, and now it's, it's like we playing practical jokes, not just on each other, but also on some of our cast members. Um, I need you know, specifics. Uh, I love a practical joke or a non set prank. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Gable. Christian, what, what what do we do? I can't remember, man. My, my, my brain's fried. It so you know, like blends in with each other. Um, yeah, I don't remember what I I do remember. What was it like the first day together that I got Gabe with the cupcake? Do you remember that at lunch? Yes, yes, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. A soft prank. Um, what happened with the cupcake? I I told him to sniff the cupcake and like an idiot he sure. did. So I just got him. <laughs> <laughs> that started our brother sister relationship. It was on like day one. I was like, oh, no, I, I know I'm going to be friends with him. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think they wanted to try and uh, uh, play any pranks or practical jokes on me because I thought most of them were scared of me. Well, so. <laughs> why would we mess with the one who fed us? He fed us every weekend. So I'm not going to mess with that. You know, you know, they, they were, the, the thing is, is once we figured it out, um, they really, really kind of engaged in making sure that we were setting this, um, this tone of what it was like to be a family in the 1980s and 1990s, which is very different than what it is now, you know, and that, you know, especially within a Mexican American family and me being the patriarch, you know, when we were on set, a lot of times I think there was this kind of like, let's make sure and, and treat dad like dad kind of thing. And, um, and we really, they, they really engaged in that a lot. And, and I want to, I want to thank them for that because it really kind of set a tone for what we were trying to accomplish. And, and I just want to, sorry, I just want to say real quick, something real quick because I want to give credit to Ricardo and Christian because, you know, uh, almost half the series was shot during the pandemic. Uh, and so that made onset pranks and jokes really hard to do because uh, you have to stand six feet apart. So uh, all credit to uh, Christian and Ricardo for, um, you know, working so hard during, uh, you know, having to come back during the pandemic um, because yeah, it, it, it makes making TV that much harder, you know, because you don't have those sort of as many uh, on the set moments, you know, it's, it's, it, it changed, um, but yet they still were so positive and so bright. Um, so yeah, I just sort of think that's also part of the problem. It's trying to remember before pandemic shoot <laughs> as well. Like a different life. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, you know, we had, filmed three months before COVID and, and I think three months af after. Um, and everyone was very safe and the protocols I think went so smoothly and you know, I think we all adapted very well. But it was, it was also, there was some challenging uh, negotiating that stuff too, you know, like the, the, the learning curve on it. But, uh, but everybody was very good about just jumping in. Well, as a fan, you completely had me fooled. It it felt like you were truly a family and it felt like I was watching a series no different than if I had been watching a series prior to COVID time. So my hat's off to you guys for really balancing all of that so beautifully. Um, Ricardo, you know, you and I spoke uh, uh, at the end of last year and you told me yes. that, you know, even though we still have Abraham with us and you, I guess you could have had the opportunity to meet with him, but you didn't. Um, I'm curious if you and Christian can speak a little bit about that process, you know, why meet with them or why not meet with them with the actual Quintanilla family. Um, and I would love to know more about that. Well, you know, I, I think there were, there were plans for them to have come out and visit the set, um, you know, and, and I think that the plan was like, I think it got pushed around several times just because of scheduling. Uh, but then all of a sudden we had a pandemic hit. So set visits were off. Uh, and, and that really kind of put an end to that for the most part. Uh, we did do a, a video conference chat with Suzette, um, I think in our last week of shooting. But you know, I, for, for me, it was, I know early on in, in the audition process or what, after I'd gotten the role, I, I still had not seen the movie 
the original movie. I, I had never seen it. And so- um, You're from Texas? Selena fan, you had never seen the movie? No, no. I, I think I've seen like bits and pieces of it. But no, I mean, look, I, I was, I, I wanted grunge music in the, in the Northwest. I wanted to live in Seattle and be wearing flannel the rest of my life, you know? Um, you know, my, when I would jump into my father's truck, you know, invariably the Hano music would be playing. So it was, it was kind of around me, but it wasn't exactly something that I engaged with. Now I, I actually listen to it a lot. Um, I love it, uh, specifically conjunto music. But um, what is it? Uh, yeah, so I, I purposely didn't want to watch the movie because I didn't want it to uh, kind of uh, inform me in a bad way about the decisions I was going to be making as, a, as an actor for this role. And so, and also with that, I probably wouldn't have wanted to meet with uh, Abraham Quintanilla until after we'd shot the show. Wow. And, and Christian, for you, um, was, the, was the experience working with Suzette, were you able to use that to prepare and inform your decisions as Selena? No, but in hindsight, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm okay with it. I like what you said, Ricardo. I mean, it's true. Those things could definitely alter what your plans were. Um, uh, for the for the job, but I was happy to get to talk to her at all. Like I I grew up loving their music, and so for me, you know, not only is that Selena's sister, but it's also Suzette. She was the drummer for this music. I mean, that's insane. So getting to talk to her was amazing. Um, I mean, I could just listen to her talk forever. It was such a great experience. Uh, and Christian, I have to tell you, every single look that you wore. Uh, just brought back so many incredible memories of watching Selena throughout the years. I would love to know from a fashion perspective, was there one outfit or look that was most thrilling to you, most exciting to put this costume on and really embody Selena? Yeah, so many, but for different reasons. Like Adela and her team were amazing. Everything on me was true vintage or, you know, an identical replica. So much so that people ask if we were gifted items to wear in the show, it's insane. Um, but I always felt most like Selena when I was just in jeans and a t-shirt and a ball cap. But then I, I knew um, how iconic certain pieces were. So it was fun to wear, like the purple jumpsuit, for instance, is amazing. Like to get to put that on is, is a really cool feeling. Um, and the Siona Ves outfit is, is pretty iconic too. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, that just speaks to Selena and how incredible she was that I remember wearing like I think a ring or a and a vest one day and people were like oh my god it's the ring it's the vest and for for people to I mean remember tiny details like that it just it's insane I told you the last time I spoke with you the the band-aid on the finger uh when you're at the Houston Astrodome performance those little details to someone like me who's a mega fan they make such a difference when you're watching this series come to life on screen uh, I know we have to wrap up shortly, so I, I figure we can end on a fun note. I would love to ask everyone, you know, not only your favorite Selena song, but is there a specific performance or music video or clip that you just kept going back to? Um, it's timeless to you. It, it excites you and always brings a smile to your face. Moises, let's start with you. Ah, uh, yes. I love it when she puts out that fan up there and just reads them to Phil. <laughs> um, and then, of course, I also love that mambo ensemble for Siu Naves. I just tend to like, you know, shift to the uber dramatics. So those those are always like, yes, one day I'll be able to carry that too. And I'm the <laughs> Jaime, do you have a favorite Selena song, Selena music video? Yeah, you know, I, I, I've i always been a beady beady bomb bomb guy. So part two was amazing to sort of see the making of, but also, you know, part one introduced me to Dame Un Beso, which was, you know, one of their first hits. And I still, I love that song. It, it is a bop to no end and I love it. And um, yeah, I, I think for me, every, every look was iconic and great and recreating everything was amazing. Um, it was super fun and an honor. Um, and yeah, again, I after this, I'm just going to be in the mood. I'm going to play Bitty Bitty Bomb Bomb after this and celebrate, yeah. Well, I, I just want to say really quickly, I love that this series not only spotlights the hits, you also really spotlight the back catalog and a lot of songs that not, fans might not necessarily be familiar with. Like, No Debus Jugar, one of my favorites. Mm. Parece Que Va a Llover, one of my favorites. And I love mm. that you guys really gave the love and attention to those songs as well. 
Ricardo, favorite Selena song or music video? I, I would have to say, you know, uh, I agree with Jaime. Uh, Dame un beso, but for me personally, um, como la flor, for sure. Um, and But I just also find it very strange that nobody wants to really ask questions or pay attention to um, the high fashion that was involved with Abraham Quintanilla's wardrobe. Um, you know, I mean, this was, we're talking, this is the this is the pinnacle of dad J.C. Penney's golf variety outfits. And, you know, and, and, and I, I just, I want to say I'm personally just a tad disappointed that nobody's really paying attention to this. He's so offended. <laughs> I imagine it was a very comfortable shoot for you. Christian's in like, you know, tight well, boots and whatnot. Ricardo, you're like, you know, living your best life. The the early years, some of those pants were a little tight. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so. <laughs> and Christian, let's end with you. Um, so, oh God, there's so many. Like, Amor Prohibido was, ne was never one of my favorite songs, but I sang it for my audition and I sang it a lot during the show. And so now it's really close to my heart. But as a fan, I, I love Que Creías. I love those performances. There's a clip of her at a, she sang it at a baseball stadium. And I always went back to that. But of the older songs that are now my favorite, I love Besitos. And Parece, it wasn't originally her, but I love, I love Parece too. And I love the rendition of, um, uh, uh, guys, help me out. The one that they performed at Matamoros, the, one of the first performances. Very popular song. La Bamba. La Bamba. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I like her take on La Bamba, yeah. Well, I have to, again, thank you, Moises and Jaime and Christian and Ricardo and the rest of the cast and crew for really delivering part one and part two of Selena the series is now streaming on Netflix. Any final words before we say goodbye? Thanks. Watch it. These are incredible <laughs> yeah. performances. It's, it's yeah. a lifetime thing and you know selena forever yeah the show was a hit so watch a hit and thank you deidre for your amazing questions and to uh, austin tv festival for hosting us what an amazing event thank you thank you, thank ATX. you vivirá siempre selena thank you guys so much